Welcome to the Camuna VTM online training, the overview model. In this module, you want to have a look at the um, Camuna VTM platform. You will have a first view of it. So I want to give you a short introduction into VTM 2.0, into the process engine, how that works, how it behaves, how the components of the Camuna VTM platform. And I want to give a first dive into the technology, how that really works, how we can see the engine, how the connection to Java is done, so you get an impression how the how the whole platform works. Uh, yeah, at the end, I want to give a short outlook how we move on in the training. So I start with a with a demo live. So we use a small process I prepared. It's a, Twitter review process, so the business story behind is that if a company want to use Twitter for, for marketing purposes, but maybe it's, yeah, it doesn't trust their employees that much that you can just tweet, so they want to have a review process, so every time you tweet, it basically goes to your boss, and the boss has to approve it, so this is what is done in that process. This process is a BPM 2.0 process, maybe your first one. So I will briefly explain it. So we have a so-called start event. So if you have the tweet written, a new process instance is started. Okay, that moves on over the so-called sequence flow into the first user task. You see the small icons here. So this is a user task that will make uh, that task appear on some kind of task list. We will see that in a minute. If the boss has reviewed the tweet, um, the process moves on. Now the engine has to decide if the boss has either approved it, so we go that way, or if he doesn't approve it, we go the other way. Then we see a service task. These small icons like here is the service task. So we will automatically publish it on Twitter. So we will call a Twitter service to do that. When we did that, or we send the rejection email, uh, we are basically done. So this is a joining gateway. It's the same gateway, but joining so it doesn't do anything. We move on through that gate, we pet through that sequence flow, and then we have a so-called end event. If we reach the end event, the process instance is ended. Okay, so this, I think it's pretty straightforward and pretty intuitive to understand. I hope so, I think. If you have any questions, we have the, our online meetings where you can ask any questions. So keep them, make, make your note and ask them in the online meeting. So that's our process. Now I want to have a quick look at how that works in real life. So I go into the tooling. We have a web application shipped um, with the Camuna. There you can go into the so-called task list. So the task list is basically the view of the yeah, end users. So that's like your email inbox. So this is how the process engine can talk to you. These are the tasks I currently have. I'm the demo user. I don't have a lot of tasks to do. But what I want to do, I want to start a new Twitter demo process. I deployed that on the platform beforehand. I'll show you that later on. So I start that. For starting it, I get a form. In this demo, I use JSF to do the forms. We have a couple of different mechanisms to do forms. That's a different story for later. But at the moment, I use simple JSF forms. So this is the email and will obviously do a hello world. Um, not sure hello world is maybe not a good idea. I did that earlier and you cannot tweet the same stuff twice. Um, so hello on the slash So I started a new process instance. That's my Twitter demo process. I can have a look at it. So that's the BTMN you know from earlier. But now I have one process instance, and this is exactly in the first step. So it's the review tweet task. So I have a task for, in this case, um, it's the demo user. I always use the demo user for reviewing. Um, I'll show you that in the BPMN model, how I configured it. So I don't have to log out, log in again. Normally, it should not be in my task list, but in the one from my boss, obviously. OK, but we accept that for the moment. Um, yeah, maybe start a second one just to show you the instance concept. All I do right now, I do some um, second tweet. 
Now I have two clusters instances running, okay, they have different times, but both of them are in the review tweet task. It makes sense, I guess, right? This is the um, task list. Um, now, for that user task, I configured again a form, a user interface. Again, it's a JSF form, could be something different again. So I see the data I entered earlier. So the data is stored together with the process instance in the process engine database. Okay. And I can decide if I approve or no. So I will approve it, submit. Yeah. Now, basically, my task is, is gone. I'm done. I can have a quick look at Twitter. Let's refresh that. So I see my tweets. That's fine. Um, yeah. So this is this is it from an end user perspective. I can switch to a different application we have. This is called Cockpit. Cockpit is the um, the monitoring application. So there we see the whole state of our process um, engine. Is everything healthy? How many process instances we have? So we see our Twitter demo process here. We see that one instance. We see one instance is currently running within the review tree. Yeah, that's the one I haven't yet finished, so I can have a look in the review tree. I see it's that step. I see the process variables. I could even edit them from a monitoring perspective, like an administrator. Make too much sense in that case. And uh, I can see the um, basically the user task who the user task is assigned to, and a couple of different things. And you can do a lot of things with that BPM and two. You can um, yeah, basically do, do filtering on, by clicking on the stuff. And there are a lot of things. I think you can explore that yourself a bit. We see a couple of features um, during the training when we need them. Okay, that's basically cockpit and what we, what we can do here. I want to switch back to my Eclipse. So what I, did I uh, yeah, have to do in order to get it running? I had the BPMN2 model. That's BPMN2 of zero is the standard. It's an ISO standard worldwide. It's adopted by basically any vendor nowadays. Um, so that's pretty good to learn anyway. It depends on which engine you use. We have an own uh, BPMN module later. The BPMN model in the background is an XML. Okay, we don't go into any details at that moment, but it's, I think it's worth to have a look that this is pretty straightforward. It's a process, a service task, an exclusive gateway on user and events, and there should be the user task. So that's pretty straightforward, actually, to read. It's standardized as well. Um, we have a couple of things we do in the BPMN 2.0 in order to get it running for, for the, um, I think the easiest thing is the service task. In order to get a service task running, we basically attach Java code to that service task. So the publish on Twitter has a couple of things you can um, configure here. Um, by the way, I use the Eclipse modeler. So we have an Eclipse plugin to model your BPMN within your IDE. Okay, there I can um, add properties. What I do here, I use the expression language. I use the Java unified expression language. So I think that's pretty common in the Java world. JSF and various other places. So um, there's a lot of documentation out there for Java Unified Expression Language too. Okay, that's my tweet adapter. If you're running in a CDI environment, I can use CDI beans here. If you want to run in a Spring environment, you can use Spring here, for example. So that's basically a connection to my Java code. So it's a tweet adapter here. Um, this is a CDI bean, it's named. Um, I could basically use the Java, um, full qualified Java class thing as well. So you don't have to use the um, thing. Then I have a delegate. So when the process instance moves through the service task, this one is executed. Um, and you get a context where you can, for example, ask uh, a query for process variables, um, access your service. So I just use Twitter for J to tweet, and basically that's it. Okay. Um, what you do within here is, is Java, so you can do whatever you want. Uh, the basic pattern is normally you get some data from your process context on the variables. You might do some transformation. Then you call it the real service. And if you get something back, you might do a transformation again and store it in the process variable. This is what this delegate should do. And this is attached to the, to the BPMN process model. 
The video tweet user task needs some configuration as well. For example, I configure who is doing that. Okay, that's pretty simple. In this case, I hard coded it to the demo user. Okay, that's maybe not pretty, not really realistic. Normally, you would use some kind of um, group, for example, so the management can do that, or sales, or whatever, or marketing. You could use um, expression language as well. So you could do something like um, the, um, maybe the author, some object within the process context, and then I could you say this has an attribute boss, so I assign it to my boss. Okay, so you can. Uh, it, yeah, basically use leverage Java code here again. Okay, that's what I did for demo user. And I can configure the user um, interface, the form, which is displayed. In my case, it's the JSF form. I could use embedded HTML forms as well, or I can even use generic forms. We will see it later in the training. Okay, but basically that's it. Just a quick look into that form. Don't want to go into a lot of detail, but it's the JSF form. Sorry. JSF form. Um, we don't care about the JSF at the moment, but what you can see, I can basically access process variables from within here. I, for example, I don't have to create tweet. I want the review tweet. I go to the review tweet, and there I can. Have, I have the approve um, checkbox. Okay, Boolean checkbox, and. The uh, value of it goes into the process variable, the process variable approved. Okay, so when I submit it, I um, uh, complete the task and I write the process variable approved. And this process variable can be used later in the process. For example, here on the gateway, I decide on the approved variable um, using expression language again. So this is approved, and I go this way if it's not approved, okay. Yeah, basically that's it. That's what I need to do here in order to get my BCMN running. It's, I think it's not much, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah. In order, um, yeah, maybe one thing to, to, to understand how the engine works. If I have this process model, I can run it in my engine and the engine can be um, triggered if you want from a simple test case. So we can steer the whole engine with the Java API. We have some support for JUnit as well. So I have a JUnit test case in order to show you that briefly. Okay, this is uh, our process engine rule. I use that JUnit 4 rule. I have a test case, so I want to test the rejected path. Again, I have some data, some variables. Okay. Um, you see that this is a simple map, the Java map, so you can hand in any variable you, you like. We have a deeper look at that later on as well, but it could be any um, yeah, primary variable, um, any a primitive variable, or any Java object, which is serializable or whatever. That will be stored together um, with the process instance in the process engine database. And now we can access the process engine. This basically comes from the test case. So what we do here, we, we start an in-memory process engine with the in-memory database only valid for that test. So that's a pretty, pretty small footprint and it's easy to set up for us. So we have a process engine and then the process engine knows a couple of services. For example, the runtime service. We can use the runtime service to start a new process instance by using the so-called key. So the key of the Twitter demo process is the um, it's the idea of the Twitter um, process here. Okay, it's a bit of confusing. It's a bit confusing that it's called ID in the BPMN 2.0, and we call it process instance key, but um, it's like that. So we call we do that, and we hand over the variable. Okay, this starts the process instance. The process instance moves on in the process of the model and will end up in the review tweet task. So what we can do is. Um, what I use is Kamuna VPN assert. It's an on module we can use um, to have that fluing assertion API you know from JUnit. So I can assert that there's a process instance which is started. It's currently waiting in the user task. Um, there is a task um, in the task management, and this is assigned to the demo user. Something which would be true, right? I can do the same stuff not with the with the JUnit. 
style, but with the Java API as well. So I can have the task service. I create a task query. We have a fluent query API. So I have some um, conditions on the on the query some parameters, like I want to have only task for demo. I could have a whole list, but I know it's only one in my test case, so I get a single result, the task. And now I call the API again, in this case, the task service, and I say, okay, I have completed the task, and this is the data I want to start in the process. Um, so basically, the task query matches to, um, to the task list. So what I see here is the task query, okay? And the complete is basically what happens when I when I click on that submit button. And if I click that, the task will complete and the process moves on. So, okay, and then I can assert that the process instance ended, and I can even assert that it passed a couple of um, yeah, couple of nodes in my process. So start review the gateway that one, um, and I hand in the ID. Okay, so this should already sorry, this should already run as a unit test. Check it. Okay, that's a green bar. We see um, our rejection. This is a smart print line, and I see that one started processing. Okay, easy I guess. So this is um, how you can imagine the engine. It's a it's a small jar with a with a database in the background, which can be started in memory. Okay. We have a couple of services. Um, in the background, you attach Java code to the service task. So it's really pretty straightforward to get started with it. Okay. In order to run it within the web application, too, so earlier I do something, um, or I use something what we call the shared process engine. So what I have in the background as a JWAP application server. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, it could be a Tomcat or it could be other Java e applications server like WebSphere or WebLogic. But in our training, we use JBoss because it's um, already pretty powerful. We have um, all the Java e stuff like CDI, JPA, um, transactions, and these kind of things. And it's open source and it's available as a pre packaged distribution from our website. So you can easy, easily use it um, at home. So that's why I'm using JBoss. That JBoss already contains the engine. So the engine is started as part of the application server. Okay. We will discuss how that is done and um, what advantage you get with that and what different architectures are possible in the in the architecture model later in the training. Okay, for now I just use it, but it allows me to um, to basically deploy a simple BOR application, a web application. That, it's a Java web application of war. Okay. I built that using Maven. That's something you should use in the training, and we recommend that for um, production use as well, to use Maven to build your product. That's a simple Maven project I have here. I add the Java code I need. I add the um, BPMN file. There is a marker file we use. It's a processes XML file, it's called. In the meta -ins, it's like the Beans XML or the persistent XML. Now that are e stuff. And that's basically a market file where you can control some stuff like if delete upon undeploy means if you undeploy the undeploy the war, the process definition is deleted from the database of the process engine. It's like create chop and hibernate. It's not very common to you to, to set that to true um, in some testing environments. It makes sense. Um, it's okay to leave that empty. Uh, it just has to be there. It's important that it's there. Okay, that's basically everything I need. So um, that's my first project. I build a bor. Okay. So I use Maven to build that. La, 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 la. Six seconds, runs my test case. Everything is fine. I copy that. And there's my JBoss. And I go to my JBoss deployment directory. So that's the JBoss you will download for, for the first um, slide. I copy that. Okay. Now JBoss picks it up automatically. And um, what you can see is that it recognizes that there is a BPMN process within. Okay. Um, so 
It basically picks it up and deploys it to our process engine database. What you can see as well, which is pretty interesting, you see that I already have two versions of that process running. So the engine is capable of running different versions. And if the process instance is still running in version one, it keeps running in version one, even if I deploy a new version. So that's already built in the process engine. We will tackle versioning in an advanced module later on. Okay. Yeah, basically, um, um, this is how that works. And then if it's on my JBoss, if it's in the shared engine, I can use our generic task list um, in order to steer something here. Yeah, I want to show you one last thing. I hope that already gave an impression how that works. Okay. I want to show you an example how powerful BPMN is, because it's always a question, should I use the process engine or not? Um, and I think especially um, the features you get and the power of BPMN 2.0, it's, it's really amazing what you can do here. For example, if you have the review tweet task and the boss, which would review the tweet is a bit lazy or slow or maybe has too much stuff in his inbox. Um, so I want to have an escalation. If that takes too long here, I want to um, escalate that. And let's assume um, we assign that to the um, the assistant of the boss. It will be demo again to make it easier. Um, and this may uh, maybe like remind um, remind him remind boss of the view. Okay. If I do it like that like remind him I there's something I want to want to keep that user task open so the situation is the boss gets the review tweet task it doesn't do it he doesn't do anything but then his assistant gets a reminder or his assistant basically walks in the office and say hey please do that do that now I watch where okay you do that now look perfect so we have basically two tasks in parallel so re review tweet will be still there and the remind Reminder should be in parallel. This is not what this timer at the moment is doing. The timer is normally um, it's, uh, an interrupting timer, so it would cancel the review tweet task. We don't want that, so we basically uncheck the cancel activity flag here. Okay, then it gets a dash line. It's just an example of how powerful BPMN is here, so we can decide if it should be um, interrupting or now it's non interrupting. It's just a simple click, and that's BPMN 2.0 standard. I have to say how long should he have time? I take 10 seconds for the demo because um, that's enough for him <laughs> to review that. No, we don't want to wait like uh, two hours. Okay. The 10 seconds are human readable. I need the um, machine readable form as well. That's ISO 8600. That's a good Wikipedia article explaining that, but it's pretty simple actually. Um, no, it's period time, 10 seconds. Okay, that's the configuration I need for the timer, and now it's already working completely. So I built that using name again. So I have a new board. Copy that into my demo. So I should get uh, version um, three. Go, yep, perfect. I go back to my web application. Okay. Um, I start a new Twitter demo process. I get the review. You already see that the process model has updated automatically in the background. So we deploy that to the database, the new version. And we have to wait for 10 seconds um, in order. Already takes 10 seconds are already. So I still have the review tweet task, but I have the reminder as well. So I have a second task here. Um, this could be now assigned to, to a different person, things like that. That was just an, uh, one example to show how powerful and how easy that is to change processes here. And um, for me, it's always important to, um, to motivate why you should use a, a process engine or BPM and 2.0, because I already saw a lot of um, homegrown workflow engines. And actually, I want to get rid of that in future. Um, I saw enough of them. Please don't build your own workflow engine. So that's um, 
what do we have there? So we go back to a couple of slides. So what you sample saw is the um, very easy process example, our Twitter process. The whole code base I use is available on our GitHub account. So if you go to GitHub Kamunda, um, there's the Kamunda Consulting Repository, and there we have a showcase Twitter. Okay, you will find that. If you check that out, um, it's basically what I what I shown you today. There you have the process with the two typical use cases of BPM. So it's human task management, stuff with the task list, and service orchestration. So I want to really automatically call services. It might be that your use case is either only service orchestration, so no user interruption at all, or it might be um, only human task management. That's fine. I mean, both is a valid use case, and um, it might be mixed or not. Okay. What the engine can do in the background as well, additionally to the task list and the calling the IT system, is basically recording a lot of uh, additional um, data, like how many process instances do I have yesterday, today, how long do they take in, uh, in average, or what was the maximum, or do I have anything um, yeah, which has failed or which doesn't have any problems, and these kind of things, or cycle times and all these things. Um, yeah, so that's uh, what the engine can do in the background. If you look at Kamunda BPM, what you saw is already a couple of our components. So you saw the, the core engine. Okay, that's basically a Java, Java jar, a small library you have, but a pretty powerful library. You have the Java API, and that's what we saw in the test case. Okay, so process engine, get runtime service, kind of process instance, and these kind of things. Uh, we have a web application, um, including the task list, that was the end user interface, and cockpit as a monitoring um, interface. Um, these are HTML5 applications. We use AngularJS there, and the REST API in the background. So everything you can do with the Java API, um, you can do with the REST API as well. So for example, we can have a look at that. If we have the REST client, for example, the REST um, stuff is deployed on my um, JBoss as well. So, for example, I can go to my localhost engine and query all process definitions. Okay. So, I get back a JSON file where I get all the process definitions I have on my engine. So, I have my Twitter demo process version 1, version 2, and version 3, and some other processes. Okay. I could even now um, start a Twitter demo process. Um, if I do so, I use a post method, and now I need a request body where I declare some data, some variables. Okay, so you can basically do anything in the um, in the REST API as well. Okay. You saw the Eclipse um, modeler, so that's the plugin we have to model BPM and to REST zero. This is normally used by the developers. We have a standalone client, so that might even be used from your business analyst, but uh, in more or in a lot of projects, business analysts have their own tooling like um, RS or V, uh, yeah, it might be Visio or Enterprise Architect of these tools. Um, then we have an additional component called Cycle to do a round trip between these tools if they are able to talk BPM and to dot zero correctly. We will see that in a different module, so we haven't tackled that at the moment, but that's fine. We, we concentrated on the on the technical part first. Obviously, we, we have a database in the background. If you look at the documentation, which is always with the docs.camunda.org, there you will find our documentation. Um, you find, for example, the user guide. In the user guide, you see, for example, the supported environments, and then you can check which databases we support. Okay, that's MySQL, Oracle, IBM DB2, PostgreSQL, MSSQL, and H2. So that's pretty, pretty, um, pretty good at the moment. H2 is the one we use for um, the demo setup of the Java. So that because then we don't need an additional database that's running out of the box. It's not really recommended for production usage, but it's pretty nice for a demo here. Most of our customers basically not use the task list in production. They build their own custom application showing the task list within their own portal or their own, um, yeah, basically their own UI. And then 
depending on the technology, if it's CSS or PVT, uh, GWT, or these kind of things, or VADIM, then it would maybe use the Java API to do a HTML5 or something like that. You might use the rest API. Both is fine and pretty valid use case for it. Okay, so that was the pretty quick component overview. Yeah, why using a process engine at all? I briefly tackled that. So please don't write your own process engine. I saw a lot of them in the in the past and because the, the people start with having a like an order entity, then you have a status attribute, which is like order unplaced, order paid, order delivered. And um, it starts, I don't only need that small flag and this normally always ends up in writing your own engine. There are a lot of features you get from the engine, like the, the whole task management. If you have user tasks, you also always have these kind of timers or escalations, um, which is all you can do out of the box. You have a lot of things about error management or retry mechanisms. If you redo service calls and the service is not uh, responding at the moment, like the network is down or the application is down or whatever, um, you can use some retry mechanism like um, we try it for the next three hours every half an hour. Pretty powerful already. You can use the versioning. That's something you saw earlier. So um, you can have different versions in parallel running. You have BPMN 2.0. And BPMN 2.0 is really powerful. If you look again in the documentation, we have our BPMN 2.0 reference. Okay, if you look in the reference, you see um, the whole um, BPMN. So you see all elements of BPM to the zero. Everything which is orange is supported by Kamuna BPM. So you see the coverage as well. And everything which is gray is not supported. Okay. So there you can have a look what's um, possible and what's not possible. And um, you might even dive deeper into how that's used in Kamuna BPM. Okay. Have a look at that. It's, it's really interesting. If you want to want to First, or start learning BPMN 2.0. We have like a couple of things here as well, like the tutorial. They can go through it. We always recommend the book. We have a book, we like BPMN 2.0, which I think is pretty good. Um, we get a lot of good feedback for that. So that makes sense. Maybe learn a bit of, about BPMN 2. Um, yeah, so that's built in. And you have tooling around, obviously. Why do you use BPMN or, or a workflow engine? Um, I mean, the biggest driver behind is normally transparency. And I think agility is basically the same thing. So nowadays, if your process, your core business processes are changing and they are changing a lot because of technology and it was new um, business models and you think of new, um, new stuff. So, there's a lot of things are changing nowadays, so you have to adjust your business processes. And if they're hidden in the code somewhere, so you have some Java here, some there, you have something in database, maybe a trigger, a PLS spell there, and nobody knows how the process really works. So it's really hard to change it because you cannot point it at the process model and say, okay, we want to change it here. So you look sometimes at documentation, which somebody thinks the process runs, um, but, but that normally doesn't match the real so there you have a really a big advantage of the process engine because you have a VPNN model, something visual, which really is in service which what run which what runs on the process engine. Yeah, and you can use that process model for monitoring and operations as well. So if there's something stuck or you have an um, like an exception in your process flow, um, you will see that in the operating tool on the VPNN process model. So you see the exact service task where um, this may problem. Yeah, and obviously quality, like um, you always know for every process instance, you know where it is at the moment, you know um, the status of an order on these kinds of things. So you can really um, improve the quality of the whole process within, within the company. So that's the idea. The, the second question is why to use Gamunda BPM? And we have a lot of experience with our BPM project. And um, so we, we worked with a lot of workflow tools in the past, actually. Um, and a lot of them are, are black box BPM suites. They're pretty shiny if they're sold. So there, there's some dashboards, some stuff. So it really looks like, oh, I can just install it, then I automate my process. It's so simple. 
And if you look at the BCAM suite itself, it doesn't deliver any value. I mean, it's just a tool to build your own process on top of it. So you still have to build the process. And this building is some, some kind of software development. I mean, it, it might not be Java, but it's kind of software development. And this is something you have to do in order to get a process application running. And the BPM suites basically promise that this can be done by a business user. That's the basic idea. And this is interesting because um, business think they can get rid of the software developers. Okay, so you don't need the IT, which is maybe too slow, too expensive, don't, don't understand the requirements and these kind of things. Um, that actually doesn't work in, in, in real life. We haven't seen any project where this is really working. Well, because the vendors, what they do is they have a Java, um, basically always Java internally, but they build a zero coding layer around it so you don't see the Java. Okay. And then your business user should be able, with that zero coding layer, to, to build a process application. But that's actually still pretty complicated. I mean, if that's your core business process, like that, or a mail order company or um, like insurance claim handling or whatever, where a lot of systems are involved. This is complicated. I mean, it's not just clicking a few buttons and it's normally always restrictive. So if you want to do something which the vendor didn't build in the zero coding layer, you're out of luck. You can simply cannot do it. And what happens in all of these products is that this tool is handed over to the development people because it's too complicated for the business user. And uh, if the software developer now looks at it, I mean, it's restricted. It's not Java as he knows it. It's something very proprietary and it's restricted. So, and you might have to code in a small, tiny box somewhere in some tooling. And um, it uses a different web service stack than we have to use to get that service calls and whatever. So there are a lot of things which really doesn't work out there. And we said, okay, that's a, yeah, it's a wrong approach. If you have the software developer there, then you want to use Java. I mean, we we call it Java developer training. You saw that we have a Java API to get to steer the engine, and we have a Java API um, if we have service calls and these kind of things. And we have a lot of more hooks overall in the engine, in the configuration, in the process model to hook in some own implementation within Java. So that's pretty straightforward. And I mean, that makes sense. If you have Java developers, they can work pretty productive to that. Um, we build it more like a framework, so it's not a the, the big suite which should do anything, but it's more a framework because you already have, for example, a data warehouse, you already have a report, you might have an ESB or a rule engine. Um, you already have a container, might be Tonk, it might be WebSki or whatever. So um, we try to be really blockable to, to run in every environment and to fit into your environment and not um, to force you into our environment. So that's a pretty big difference. And we use BPMN 2.0. So that's a really good standard. We're working in the standard. So a colleague of mine is um, in, the, in the working group. And we do that pretty well, I guess. I think so. I mean, you can check that yourself. And we do a lot of things, uh, um, and again, in the book, for example, about methods, how to really do business IT alignment with BPMN. Okay, so um, we have experience like for yeah five to ten years uh, with our workflows and like five to six years BPM and two, so that's pretty good. And it's open source. I mean that makes sense. If you're a Java developer, you want to have a look in the sources. If you want to hook in some stuff, you have to understand how the platform works. And if there's something strange, at least you can debug into it. Okay, that was it. That was a first. Quick overview of the Kabuna VPN platform about uh, yeah, VPN and 2.0, the process and the API. I hope you get an idea how that's working. Um, now it's your turn, basically, to do a first lap. I want you to install the platform yourself if you didn't do so yet. So you can go to kamunaorg.download. Go to the Kamuna Org website, go to the download section, download the latest. Um, JWAP distribution as zip or, or tabo, depending on the system. Unzip it and then start the JWAP. Should be done in like seconds to minutes. Install the Kamuna VPN modeler, the Eclipse plugin. 
So you might need an Eclipse Kepler if you don't have it. So download an Eclipse Kepler from the Eclipse website. Download our own modeler. So that's this one within Eclipse. So you go in Eclipse um, to um, install new software, and then you hand in our our update side, and you can install the model and on that one. Okay, and then go to the um, get started tutorial. That's on Camunda.org. Get started. The simple process application, and follow that tutorial step by step to get your first project running. So it basically does everything I did already in order to get it running. But then you set it up yourself. Okay, step by step. It's basically yeah right. It's it's targeting Tomcat, but um, it's working on JWAS as well. So we use JWAS in the training piece to use the JWAS. Okay. Okay. So that's actually your next. Up. If you have any problems, if you have any questions, um, we will have our weekly online meeting where you can ask anything and get support. We can have the screen sharing, these kind of things. Have fun with that. That's it for today. I hope um, you enjoyed it and see you soon in the next module. Thank you.